Okay, today's video is going to complete my little mini-series, Painting Critiques, and we're going to do a deep dive into my favorite urban paintings. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. And if you're watching uh, for the first time, checking out my channel, thanks for joining us. On my channel, I do a lot of painting demonstrations and a plain air and in the studio. And uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, I invite you to subscribe. If you do so, hit the bell notification icon. It'll alert you when new stuff comes down the pipe. Just go in there into your menu and be sure to click on See All Posts. And uh, let's get started. So this little series of painting critiques is an important facet for you as an artist to learn how you might look at your own paintings and study them from different angles. Try to look back at older work and see what you were trying to achieve and see if you did achieve that. And there are some that even after years of having them in your own personal possession, you still enjoy looking at them daily. And that's something to, to really kind of mark your progress as an artist. And you also want to think about ways that you might be able to improve in the future. Maybe you're on to other types of subjects now. But whatever the case, it's important to do this and to always have some insight to uh, lead you down a more improved path in the future. So let's take a look at the first painting. Now this one here is called Appleton Street Sunday. It's a 16 by 20 on canvas and I painted it in 2002. And one of the things I always liked about it was how much air I have in the shadows, even though uh, they're in darkness from the sunlight. I didn't make them too dark and I was really happy with that feature of uh, the finished painting. And I really was attracted to the this orange facade of the building. It really kind of caught my attention. And the idea of having all this structure with the softness of some shadowed leaves coming across the building from an outside source, the tree on the outside. Now as we uh, zoom in a bit and take a little closer look, there's a few things that in hindsight I would have spent a little more time on and that is the perspective lines of the brick over here on the right hand side in the shadow side of the building here. Uh, it was difficult because I tend to zoom in on my subject and want to have more of a personal aspect to my urban pieces rather than more of a vista. There have been a few pieces I've done where I've had a little more of a vista showing of the of a faraway scene of some buildings but for me having that personal aspect of closing way in I think it makes it more personal and you're extracting sort of a element of a big city and that's what I enjoy about doing the urban work and never mind the fact of the uh, structure of the sunlight and shadow on the planes of the building is very appealing to me. So one thing that I was always kind of uh, happy with too is how I handled the interior of the building that we see here the hint of a chair and a little bit of a, a countertop in here and then you have some another chair over here with an, another counter with some things on it, little clock suggested and uh, of course in real life glass is very reflected with images uh, projecting onto the reflection of glass but so finding that balance of, of it's almost like you're painting in a surrealist fashion because you're not really painting how it would really be and you're just giving the illusion of your realism. Now in terms of paint application, I didn't go super thick on any parts of this painting. It's very kind of a thin layer of paint. And I tend to, in my current work in some cases, tend to have more uh, interesting brush strokes now. I prefer now to activate an area a little more with some brush work. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this painting came out. So let's move on to the next one. Now this next one here is called Bridge Shadows. It's an 8x10. It was painted last June and uh, painted plain air with minor touch-ups in the studio and I was so happy with how this came out for suggesting such a busy uh, framework of a bridge. So let's take a closer look at this one and talk about it in uh, detail. Now this one, the challenge was finding a proper level, level of detail for the complexity of the subject. I really took a, a, some liberties because of course our eyes can see a lot more detail 
than we need to put in there. And simplifying for a subject like this can be very difficult. Current, this is the Kennebec River in Augusta, Maine. And of course that you know leads into the ocean. But so there's a, a stiff current running. And uh, the reflections from the sky were changing at different times. So I decided to put some in where I thought it would be effective, where you would have light against dark set off some different uh, levels of the composition. What I did with some of this is I painted the framework first over here and then I applied marks in between the uh, girders and it facilitated integrating the, the, the painting of the bridge into the so it didn't stand out too much and get too linear. I think that would be the uh, most cri critical aspect if you're painting something like this is really try to find the biggest generic shapes of that uh, object that you're trying to paint because you you just don't have the time number one and you don't want to make a painting too busy by trying to have every little uh, girder in there. In the end I felt I did a really good job with handling everything. The big challenge too was having this green bridge against the green of the landscape foliage but definitely would like to tackle this bridge again from a, a different angle. I think it's pretty interesting and like maybe sort of underneath the bridge looking up. I think that'd be pretty cool too. So you can see how I've done some of the work identifying the bridge by painting negative around it, especially up where I mentioned before. Not super la heavy layers of paint, but there's still some activity in the brushwork. Sometimes the reflections are just as strong as what's being a, a reflective and you got to play down play them down a bit to, to, for me to have it read right. I think it's more important as a painting. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you'd like to see me do another one that's going over uh, some of my coastal paintings, a little mix of coastal paintings, still life, and interiors, uh, drop me a line, let me know, and uh, I'll put together some of those also. But uh, I really like looking at some of these works, and like I mentioned before in the previous videos that uh, I posted, it's helpful, like uh, lately I've been in a little slump coming off the winter, and a lot of artists get that in, in the winter months, but uh, looking at the older work and seeing what I've done and accomplished, it really can help you as an artist. The idea that you can go forward and, and produce work like that again and have faith that you'll come out of the slump and move on. Now let's take a look at one of my all-time favorite paintings. Now this painting here is a 24 by 40. It's called Buildings in Afternoon Sun. It's on canvas and uh, I just love this painting. Super inspired. It's from uh, 2006. I was super inspired by, uh, as most of you know by now, I'm a big Edward Hopper fan. So he's really, with his buildings, the way he paints buildings, really inspired me with this scene here. And uh, the actual original, back in the day, had some train tracks in the front here. And if I can find the picture on my computer, I'll post it up in the one of the corners here and uh, show you what the previous painting looked like. I think it's much improved now. Allows the viewer to go in. There's a lot of texture in the in the area here in front. So we'll take a, some look at uh, some details and how I handled certain parts. I'm really happy with how I handled the uh, shop windows and all that sort of uh, thing. Before we get started on this painting, I just want to remind everybody from my... Uh, little plein air painting of trees in the in the woods. I'll uh, put a link up here in one of the corners to the video. I'm doing a special offer in that video uh, for one of my paintings and that drawing is going to take place on May 17th. So you still have time to go check out the video and uh, if you like the painting make some comment about it and say you want it. Uh, just go check out the video and listen to the offer and uh, let's continue on. Okay, so one of my favorite things about this painting is the arrangement of shapes that I achieved in here. I really like all the little rectangles and bits of light catching and then how this interrupts the plane back here with this little flag thing and uh, then having this circular with the tanker car giving and then mimicking that and some curvature of the windows uh, I thought was a really nice touch. And this, the only thing that kind of, you'll see when I post, uh, find a uh, photograph and post it uh, in the corner of the video from the old version. But this, the where I took the picture from here, it kind of 
has a hump in it and goes down. So that's why this might look a little odd. And those are little things that, you know, I'm so concentrated in this when I took the picture that you don't, you, you kind of lose track of other elements going on in the painting. And uh, something to be aware of, not much uh, you can change to make stuff up and believable, but that can happen. And also, I took some liberties with the detail that you see uh, in the painting. You, Of course, I don't have the original photograph anymore, but I just wanted to simplify the shapes. And the biggest thing that I did, as a lot of you are probably going to notice, and I've seen it in a painting in a magazine, there's no wires on a telephone pole. And I've seen it done in other paintings. I thought I'll give it a go. One thing I like is I like power poles, but I really don't like all the lines too much. And I think there is a balance, uh, you know, when you're painting realistically, you have to put in certain features. So I'm still toying with that. So now we're going to take a look up close at the texture I was talking about in the pavement area and show you what I did there. Now you can see what I've done here. I applied it with a palette knife, moved it around with a brush. And that really facilitates some interesting textures. Then just here's a little close-up shot of the detail of the little flag mechanism and uh, show you how the texture looks in that a little bit. Okay, now we're just going to take a second and talk about tangents and paintings because there's a few things in this painting that if I had to do it over again, I would change. So let me show you those. So what I mean by tangent is where you have one line or shape meet right on the line of another. So right here where you have the shadow part of this little wall back there, you have this support wire right in line with that. So I would definitely have moved. The easiest fix, of course, is to move this wall over a bit and have the light uh, on the left-hand side of the wire. And there's also one other spot uh, uh, over that way that uh, I'll show you too. Okay, in this other spot here, you have this little whistle thing right in line, the point of that right in line with the window frame back here. And uh, so those are just little things. Uh, I think someone would have to be really studying the painting to find those type of things, but it's important. Uh, I'm much better now at the end of the painting process to uh, really analyze and look for those things now, and uh, it really helps a lot. Okay, so that concludes the critique of this painting. Let's move on to the next one. If you like what you see or you have any questions about any of them so far, just drop me a line in the description box below. And uh, I'll try to, like I mentioned, uh, do a card for the uh, special offer thing for the painting up in the, one of the corners here. And I'll try to also put a link in the description box. So, on to the next one. Okay, now we move on to a smaller painting, an 8x10 called Green Dumpster in Morning Light. And it was painted in March of last year. And I really like the textures definitely that I achieved in this and the composition I'm super happy with. And uh, we'll take a little closer look at this one and uh, go over the details. Now this one is a, a mix of plain air and studio. And there's a little bit of liberties I took with some background here. I extended some of the tree to set off the corners. I love doing that here and here. And of course the top of the truck there. And I like how I handled the brushwork in the pavement here. It's kind of slightly at a, uh, at a diagonal because you have the parking area. It kind of rolls up to the building. And then a little bit of debris, just sandy lot right here. And I really will pan in for a close-up of that. But uh, in the saturation of this little green dumpster, I just loved against all of this um, building. Over here was originally just a boring garage door, no interest. So I, I invented a window. If you have trouble inventing shapes or you're kind of worried about that, you know, Google has all kinds of images. You can punch in like old garage window or that sort of thing, get some reference that way to use as a, point, a jumping off point to uh, kind of recreate your painting if you need to. Maybe you just like the bigger structure of what you're painting, but some details within that need to suggest more of the story. So uh, try that out sometime. So closing in on detail of this painting, you can see how I just kind of applied the paint and some of it I applied with a palette knife and uh, just moved it around with the brush sometimes just left it with the palette uh, brush work and uh, that really facilitates some nice interesting aspects to it as the viewer got closer to the painting 
Okay, so that concludes the critique of this particular painting. Super happy with it. Love how it turned out. And uh, all of these are still available through uh, my website if you're interested in any of them. Uh, just drop me a line and uh, we'll work it out from there. But we're going to continue on with the uh, last painting in the bunch. Okay, now we're going to go over the last painting in this little critique right behind me here. And uh, sorry if there's going to be a little bit of glare because the easel has to be back just a touch. And I apologize for that. I'll try to avoid that as much as I can. Okay, and this, and this one is called Message. It's from 2018 and it's a 30 by 40 oil on canvas. Okay, now this one I titled Message, of course, because you got the little love peace symbol and the little hands there. I totally made those up. They were not in my reference photograph. I have painted uh, graffiti from re reference photographs before, but in this case, I just want to kind of do my own thing using some Google images as reference. And uh, we'll get a closer look up here, but there's a lot of scumbling of paint going on in this piece and some splatter a little bit that really adds to the texture of a train car. And uh, I really like closing in on these uh, type of paintings, very cropped in. I think it adds a nice abstract element to otherwise realistic uh, painting. And so uh, I was pretty happy with the overall composition, the way I cropped it. There's a few things down here in the shadow areas that, uh, you know, it's been a little bit, so I will probably handle a few things differently. There's more information going on in the reference photo, but I didn't want to overpower uh, this nice dark shadow, so I played them down. And uh, when you step back, it has some really nice impact. So let's take some uh, closer looks and go from there. So as we pan in, I'm just showing you some close-ups a little bit of how I handled the bolts and rivets in the piece and a close-up of some scumbling. And then I'm panning back around to show you a little bit of how uh, that nut uh, in sunlight, how that came out. You can actually see, still vaguely, some pencil lines from my original mapping out kind of right in here so the painting is drawn out first light pencil and occasionally I'll go over with some uh, like ultramarine blue paint fixed to uh, graphite depends on how more how detailed drawing I need this one didn't take too much so one thing that's going to be very useful if you're doing uh, some subject like this and and the lettering transitions from sunlight into shadow. It's really important to pay attention how you handle the values of the tones in the shadow and you want to create air in your shadows and, and uh, facilitating uh, a little more realism and depth in your paintings. So something to think about. So this is going to wrap up this little painting critique. I, this one is uh, one of my favorites. I don't usually work too large because it uh, can take up a lot of space in my small studio. Okay, everybody, so that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the video. I kind of really like looking at that uh, older work and going back and revisiting. It's pretty enjoyable. If you have any comments, drop them in the description box. Again, if you were new watching for the first time, thanks for joining us. And uh, again, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, go in and, and just uh, select See All Posts in your notifications uh, little bell. So, uh, and everyone can find me on Facebook at Avalski Studio and... Uh, Instagram at Abowski Studio. Uh, until next video, bye.